I, I didn't really know even what a freelance journalist did. I just knew that I couldn't handle the newsroom and I loved writing. So it was kind of, I didn't have any models for what I was doing. It was, um, I wish Girl with a Satchel had been around then. <laughs> you know, like it was even before um, blogging or I didn't have any peers. Um, I think that's really, I really missed that actually when I left the newsroom. It was just um, being around other people that, had that hunger for writing and for stories and, um, yeah. And, of course, on the road, though, and, and in the book, you you talk about some of the battles, like the, the practical battles that you face, you know, trying to find an internet connection, getting yeah. newspapers four days after they're published. Um, yeah. So it was really tough, and you, you felt like you had to kind of fake it because you were writing about fashion and you had to <laughs> your hair for a week. Um, <laughs> Tell us a bit, a bit about your experience of freelancing <laughs> on the road. Oh, that was hilarious. But it was so fun, though, um, because, you know, for years I I'd, I'd dreamed of this. You know, I remember writing down what my ideal would be, and that would be to have weekly columns, you know, because that way you've got a weekly salary and, you know, you're in the in the field and you've got – you're toing and froing with editors. So it's like you've got that – that peer support again but it didn't come until <laughs> you know nothing ever comes at the time you expect it to never <laughs> nothing um you know not love not not work stuff um uh so yeah it came when i'll just assume that um your your readers haven't haven't read that part of the book it, it came when i'd literally thrown away all my belongings and was sitting in the top of in this awful dirty room in a pub with all my clothes in one bag and um, Jim and I were cleaning out the car and I'd actually just pitched a story to the newspaper about um, girls living in pubs because I thought it was so bizarre the experience I was having I thought oh they'll be interested and there was some mix up and my email went to the wrong person and all the editors were changing like at that exact time so somehow my... <laughs> My details got passed on as a fashion writer and then I got this phone call um, offering me a weekly fashion column and, um, yeah, I wasn't going to say no, <laughs> even though I had to get in the car and we were just about to cross the Nullarbor. Um, I thought, oh, my God, this is ridiculous. I loved Penelope Green's When in Rome um, because it was a similar thing where she, she didn't even know a word of the language and she's gone to Rome to make her life. And it was just such a ridiculous risk, a bit like what I did with Jim. Um, and I sort of modelled it on that. Um, and I, I found another um, memoir, um, Ticket to Ride, Lost and Found in America, and that one was by Sarah Darmody. And I loved that, and it had me laughing out loud. And so I sort of studied, I studied the story structure of how they did that and, um, uh, yeah, but it, it just is a different type of writing because it's showing, not telling, you know, and in journalism you, you just tell, 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 it's who, what, where, how, why. There's lots of Aussie vernacular in here, which yeah. I just love, and obviously because of the yeah. story that you're telling, that's quite natural. Yeah, um, yeah. And it, it's really nice to see that. Um, in, in such a beautiful book because I feel like, um, I don't know about you, but you know, particularly in the mainstream media, um, we're, we're losing a bit of that language and you've really brought yeah. it to life for us. Is that something you did consciously? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because, um, because I was having such a wild time with Jim and we are both so frenetic with everything, um, travelling, I... I wish I'd written more of the dialogue that I was catching when we stopped for gigs and shows, but that what's in the book is stuff that I had recorded in my journal because it was just so... I just thought, I will never believe that people said this when I'm back in Melbourne, you know, in my cosy little flat. Um, I, I just... I had to write it down because you can't make that stuff up. It's, I, I wrote down an intention before I... Um, before I wrote it, and it wasn't, um, you know, I couldn't picture an ideal reader as in a demographic or, a, you know, what she wears or how old she is. Um, 
all that. I just hope that it inspires people to get a little bit out of their comfort zone. And that that doesn't necessarily have to mean throwing away everything and jumping into a Mazda or, <laughs> or going overseas to an olive grove and building a house or because a lot of us can't afford those things or health or family issues or, you know, just people have such complex lives. I just wanted to show what miraculous, beautiful things can happen when you take a risk. That's all I wanted to show, and that was my intention. And I guess my ideal reader is just someone who takes a little bit of that away and they read the book and says, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to take a risk today. And it might be small, but, um, yeah, just the, the, things that, the payoff is always worth the pain. Louisa, congratulations. I, I hope the, the launch party is a huge success and I Thank hope lots you. of people will pick up your book because it's really, um, and I don't mean to sound corny, but it was really heartwarming. Um, it's a great Australian story and you're an extremely likeable writer and I think oh, that really you. shines through. So thank you for this book. I, I, I loved every, every page and I'll probably go back oh. and, and read it again because um, it's the kind of book that you can snuggle in with and, and feel like you're, you're talking with a, a best friend. Um, so oh, thank you. Thanks. It's a, a very generous thing and, and good luck. I hope it's a huge success. Oh, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. It was great speaking with you. you